Okay, I was out walking around today and I run across um, garlic mustard and I swore up and down that I was going to do a um, video on each of the wild edibles that I could find around my homestead in Kentucky. So this is it. One of the things I want you to notice is the leaves toward the bottom closest to the ground are more rounded than the ones that are higher up on the stems. I'm also showing there that the stem is somewhat furry or it does have, you know, kind of that furry look close to the ground. But the leaves close to the ground are rounded. The leaves closer to the top, they get more triangular shape and jagged edged. And um, basically this is an edible plant that every part about the plant is edible. The leaves are edible, the stems are edible, the seeds are edible, the flowers are edible, and the roots are also edible. Um, on the stem, the leaves are alternating from side to side. And when it has white flowers and they open up, there are four petals in the flower. Um, it grows in clumps on the ground and as it matures it'll shoot up these stems that can get between one to four feet in length or height. Um, it's an invasive species so you can eat as much of it as you want however I'm going to talk more about that in a minute. Um, it gets its name it's called garlic mustard it gets its name from the smell that you get if you crush the leaves. And that's one of the ways you can help identify it. So you can get a pretty good look at the pictures and then if you crush the leaves it has a garlic smell. Um, the taste is often referred to depending on which part of the plant that you eat. It could have a garlic taste. It could have sort of a wasabi taste and it could have a pepper taste. Uh, the pepper and the hotness can be from sweet and mild to hot. That depends on the part of the plant that you are eating and the time of year that you harvest it along with location can also affect that. It's harmful to the environment. I said that before, it often crowds out other plants. So again, feel free to eat as much of it as you want, but I am going to touch on that here in a minute. So as with all of the cabbage family, which would be cabbage, Brussels sprouts, etc., they all contain very small traces of cyanide. The traces are so small that it probably isn't going to hurt the average human because your liver will filter it out. But I would suggest that you limit the number of meals that you have with garlic mustard to only two or three a week. Cyanide is water soluble, so one of the ways you can remove the cyanide is to boil the parts you're going to use in meals or cooking, then dispose of the water, and then the, most of the cyanide will be gone. It also has some medicinal uses. Some people say it can be used to prevent cancer since it contains cancer-fighting ingredients isothiocyanates, which is basically cyanide, from the mustard family, and allyl sulfides from the garlic family. It's been used as an antiseptic for ulcers, bruises, sores, coughs, colds, clearing a stuffy head, also used to encourage sweating, and as a cure for colic and kidney stones. It has also been used by crushing leaves and rubbing it on the bottom of the feet to reduce cramping. A yellow dye can also be extracted for use in arts and crafts and that sort of thing also. Um, so I have to be honest that 
I have only ever ate the leaves and I prefer the younger leaves um, but I have used it to make a pesto there are all kinds of recipes online for garlic mustard just search for garlic mustard recipes anyways I'm going over on time on this I actually have more audio than I have footage so I might have to play some of this over and over again anyways thanks for watching God bless you God bless your families God bless your homesteads